Few works of science fiction have presented such a detailed ecological creation as the world of Arrakis, also known as Dune. Dune was the first science fiction novel to present a world with a fully realised and detailed ecology of its own, and it is for this reason that it can be seen as truly groundbreaking and ahead of its time. Gwyneth Jones, when discussing the icons of science fiction, said that Herbert's Dune was the most admired of living imagined worlds, the arid planet terrain and its extraordinary wildlife that catches the reader's imagination. With Arrakis we are presented with a world that has the harshest of environments imaginable while still capable of sustaining life. The Fremen who live there have adapted every single mode of living, from the political, religious, social, martial and even economic, to the necessities of the planet's ecology. The adaption of their life systems is done out of one simple natural requisite, the need to survive. At their roots, Fremen remained special application animals, desert survivors, governance experts under conditions of stress. Out of this immediate requirement comes a long term goal, where the individual and collective Fremen act as geomorphic agents, with the desire to eventually change their desert world into an Eden like paradise, a world lush and verdant where they hope one day their descendants will live easier and simpler lives. The ecology of Arrakis in one way governs the needs of the entire Imperium of Shaddam IV, and later, the Empire of the Atreides. All of human civilization depends on the one great natural resource of this barren wasteland, the spice melange. It is the dependency on this unusual drug, which can also be seen in terms of a fuel, that creates the hydraulic despotism of the Imperium. To understand the complexity of the story of Dune is to understand Herbert's creation of this strange desert planet and its ecosystem, the utter dependency of the people of the Imperium on the spice melange, and the drug's relationship to the sandworms of the desert. Dryland ecology is the most detailed and explored of Dune's major themes, and from the offset, this is made clear by the book's initial dedication. It reads as follows. To the people whose labours go beyond ideas into the realm of real materials, to the dryland ecologists, wherever they may be, in whatever time they work, this effort at prediction is dedicated in humility and admiration. Herbert's ideas of ecology as a long term process are fundamental to the creation of this world and the enormous scale of his story. They are also a comment on the westernised systems of thought that circulate regarding ecology and the nature of the catastrophe that awaits humanity. Essential to these ideas is the use of human beings as tools for geological management and change. The spice melange is also an important allegory to humanity's dependency on natural resources. The consequences to society when control over such a resource is absolute, is the economic and political concept of hydraulic despotism. For this reason, water and melange are an exact analogue of oil scarcity and clean potable water. Chom, the Combine Honnet Ober Advancer Mercantilis, the corporate entity that together with the Spacing Guild controls all trade in the Imperium, was in Frank Herbert's mind not just an allegory for OPEC, the organisation of the petroleum exporting countries, he goes as far to say Chome is OPEC. Melange exists on only one world in the known universe, namely Arrakis, and cannot be found or transplanted anywhere else. Ecology is intrinsically linked with Frank Herbert's concerns of environmentalism being used as part of a political motivation by leaders seeking a new crusade for their own aggrandizement. Ecology might be the next banner for demagogues and would be heroes. For the power seekers and others ready to find an adrenaline high in the launching of a new crusade. Before proceeding, it is best to clarify some key terms, the most important of which is that of ecology. Frank Herbert had his own views on how to define ecology, and these are presented within the text of Dune and reiterated therein. Herbert's understanding of ecology is that the highest function of ecology is understanding consequences. Herbert in this case was actually misquoting Paul Sears from his book Where There Is Life, 
a text which serves as an introductory work to the layman on ecology. In the collected insights of Frank Herbert in The Maker of Dune, Herbert claims that he didn't recall where he heard this quotation and would like to attribute it. The footnote to the text informing us that it is indeed Sears's book, Where There Is Life, then repeats this misquotation in all certainty. The quotation is in fact about science in general rather than ecology, and is the highest function of science is to give us an understanding of consequences. There is no reason however that Herbert cannot apply this to ecology in the specific. After all, modern ecology is regarded as a science up to a point. See Sears's following definition. It would seem that a great deal of Herbert's understanding of ecology, at least initially in June, would come from Paul Sears's books, and there is even an indication that reading Sears may have led Herbert to the works of Samuel Butler. Sears himself viewed ecology as less a science in the conventional sense than a method of approach that draws upon the best information it can get from whatever source. The ecologist tries to assess this information with scientific rigour and as far as possible in his research to use scientific controls. Herbert's idea of ecology is a very broad definition then, and quite different from the following presented in the Concise Oxford Dictionary. Ecology, 9. The branch of biology concerned with the relations of organisms to one another and to their physical surroundings. Origin, 19th century, as oecology, from the Greek oikos, house. Herbert's own complex consideration of ecology meant that he viewed the subject as a human undertaking that had at its core the understanding of intricate systems, subsystems, processes, entities and relationships that make up an ecosystem. A system is defined as a complex whole, a set of things working together as a mechanism or interconnecting network, and an ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. Liet Kynes, the primary ecologist of Arrakis, who prefers the term planetologist, makes the following observations, which are paradoxically very much Herbert's own views whilst simultaneously being those of Western man. The thing the ecologically illiterate don't realise about an ecosystem, Kynes said, is that it's a system. A system. A system maintains a certain fluid stability that can be destroyed by a misstep in just one niche. A system has order, a flowing from point to point. If something dams that flow, order collapses. The untrained might miss that collapse until it was too late. That's why the highest function of ecology is the understanding of consequences. Had they achieved a system? In addition to the complexities presented by an ecosystem, Herbert's tribal Fremen, a people who have been forced to change every aspect of their lives to accommodate surviving on the harsh world of Arrakis, represent a deeper understanding of ecology. Their actions as geomorphic agents present a long term view of the subject, but perhaps more importantly, that ecology as a science and endeavour has many shapes and forms within the human sphere of influence. As such, ecology has many subsystems that make up the whole of the science. However, trying to nail down Frank Herbert's attitude to systems is difficult, as the author once again presents a paradoxical and conflicting viewpoint. Herbert's work is often perceived as promoting systemic thinking, and especially the ability to do so in the long term. However, Frank Herbert has also commented on the fact that systems are dangerous, though in this case he is discussing the systems of power and control that develop around those who are viewed by society as larger than life, that is, heroes. It is the systems themselves that I see as dangerous. Systematic is a deadly word. Systems originate with human creators, with people who employ them. Systems take over and grind on and on. They are like a flood tide that picks up everything in its path. How do they originate? For this reason, the Fremen's attitude to ecology is multifaceted, incorporating the subject into every sphere of their lives by creating systems. Tuponce points out in his work which focuses heavily on the language of Dune, especially as a polyphonic novel, ecology therefore 
has a much broader meaning than the mere study of organisms and their interaction with their environments. It can mean globally social ecology, political ecology, economic ecology, and even language. I would add to this depiction religious ecology as fundamentally important to all of the above meanings, because it is by the religion of the Fremen that all of their subsystemic viewpoints of their environmental interactions are governed. <laughs> <laughs>